Well, it is very important to have scientific input, specifically evidence-based data and insights into risk management. What we can see in the real world is that if something happens, everybody gets really excited about it, and then they all try to put the regulation on this one event. And then risk analysis can help us to put things into perspective. I think that is very important to see that uh, there's a lot of random events in the world, and if we all be uh, searching for these random events, we're going to have you know, a major trouble in terms of resource allocation. However, if you have a much better understanding of the risk, their causes, and the consequences, this helps us to inform policymaking. Well, there are a couple of uh, examples. One is, of course, if you talk about uh, epidemics um, that, you know, have been come up in the last uh, few decades, Asian flu, swine flu, Ebola and everything else. I think it's very important there to have good risk assessments to avoid let people panic, but at the same time to make sure that the necessary precautions are taken. Well, I think trust is a very precious good. I mean, we know it uh, takes long time uh, to gain trust and it takes very little time to lose it. Um, for that reason, I think it's very important to invest in activities that have the potential to gain trust. And there are two major prerequisites. One is clearly honesty about what science can do and what it cannot do. We cannot dissolve uncertainty. The future is uncertain and there will always be events that nobody has predicted and that is a part of our life and we have to be sure that we don't give the impression we can predict everything but that we can say yes we can give you directions and orientations or we cannot take future events away from this wheel of uncertainty that's always around it and the second point is to show very clearly that these kinds of risk assessments have really help to save people's lives. Well, I think there were some things about risks that are difficult for even scientists and specifically for policymakers and the general public to understand. That is that we never have certainty that uh, there are no deterministic relationships between cause and effects. There are only what we call stochastic, which means well, there are always exceptions. And that's sometimes very difficult in risk communication. If we say smoking is dangerous, anybody who will listen to this message will say, well, I know of a 90-year-old man who smoked 10 cigarettes a day. He's still beautifully alive and uh, very alert. So what are you telling me? And this is a problem. These are only trends. The same thing happens in uh, climate change uh, information. People say, well, this summer is not as, you know, it's not hot. So what are you telling us? And so these kinds of stochastic relationships showing there's a trend, but we cannot say exactly for each case what is going to happen or for each individual or for each year. That is sometimes very difficult and, and that is intrinsically interwoven with risk analysis. That's something even with more and more knowledge, we can never overcome that kind of uncertainty that we call aleatory uncertainty because it's like a dice. You know, it's uh, we cannot tell us what actually happens. We can only give probabilities. Well, I think um, that you know, normal people, but sometimes better than politicians and scientists themselves, are aware that there is uncertainty. If I buy a new dress, if I buy new shoes, maybe through the internet, I know, well, maybe they don't fit and have to send it back. So we always have this issue that things are not as we have predicted them to be. That's nothing new. I think what we need to tell people is that science cannot overcome this ambiguity in terms of future. Uh, it's just as it's good to say, well, if I buy some new shoes and I know roughly my size, it doesn't make any sense to order shoes which are three times higher in size than my actual size. But still, if I order them with my size, they may still not fit. So it's good to have that information because it gives us better orientations and help us to have less trials before we, we get too many errors. Um, and science can help us to have less errors, but it cannot 
prevent errors from happening. And I think that is a very important message um, and that, you know, don't oversell the possibilities of science in shaping the future, but also don't underestimate the need for orientation. 